Guys, without a shadow of a doubt, we took a little bit of a gamble on today's pickups. You'll, you'll get that joke in a second. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to week number 16 of the collection update series. Over the last handful of weeks, we have been filling out a 480 card 12 pocket binder. We're adding a new page every single week, which is 12 new cards, and we get to talk about those cards, the value, the fun part of the collecting side, that we normally don't get to talk about throughout the gameplay series. Now as part of this, as always guys, we do invite you all to share your collection stories, share some of the pickups that you have made over the last week. We've actually had a lot of comments on the last one. There's a lot I could choose from here, but I'm actually choosing Scars McLovin, partially because of the username. I mean, come on, Scars, that's that's so sick. But also, uh, this is the first time I've heard from you. So first of all, welcome to the Collection Update series. I really do appreciate it, my friend. Uh, you have picked up, you mentioned the Ozolith, Anointed Procession, and a couple of other things uh, that you finally got to pick up for yourself. You said that was your first copy of the Anointed Procession, which is such a sick card. Great pickups, my friend. I really do hope that you uh, continue the collection process Process. Don't forget to leave any of your new pickups on the next episode. Again, guys, we had a lot of comments on the last one, so thank you guys so much for the ongoing support on this series. You can get featured in next week's episode if you do share what you have collected over this week. Without further ado, though, guys, we are going to jump into the 12 new cards we have picked up, and hopefully throughout this you'll get why I made a really dumb joke at the beginning. Dad jokes for the win. All right, guys, here we are. We have got 12 amazing new cards. Our first one here is True Name Nemesis. This is the time-shifted old-school frame for the card. Uh, a really powerful card, giving protection from a chosen player. That's pretty good. Uh, this sees a lot of play, usually in eternal formats like Legacy and Vintage, because it's such a difficult card to handle. Uh, and so a lot of times you can kind of grind out a game. Now, I know, of course, in a lot of eternal formats, things are trying, most decks are trying to win just kind of on the spot. They're very, very powerful. You've got Storm, you've got Reanimator, things like that. Uh, but this is really fitting into the decks that are looking to play more of a controlling game. Uh, this is kind of your game winning card. It's hard to deal with, it can ping the opponent for three damage every turn uh, and then theoretically you win the game off of it and I just I really love that I think it's a really powerful card it's kind of a ridiculous card which is part of why I love adding it to the collection binder today but it's just a really awesome one Next up, we have Tombstone Stairwell, and I will be honest, I believe the only reason I picked this up was because it's reserve list. I don't have a ton to talk about with this. It does feature uh, the cumulative upkeep cost, which is one of those things that's really not very good. Uh, there are only a couple cards that I can think of, in particular Mystic Remora, uh, that really actually see play with cumulative upkeep. Now, I know there are a couple others. If you know the names of them offhand, I think there's a red one that generates mana, things like that. Uh, feel free to share them. But this one I actually had, didn't even know existed, uh, but it did pop up on the random scryfall and I was like, yeah, it's reserve list. I'll pick it up. Uh, don't think it's too crazy on the value. You'll see it. I, I don't, but you'll see it. <laughs> Uh, our next card here is Blood Knight. This is just a promo, and you guys know I love a good promo. This is that old school full art where you still have kind of the card frame around the edge here, uh, but the artwork takes up the entirety of the card, so you kind of lose the lower half of the frame here. And I really love that. It's not even foil. It's it's really nothing too crazy. It's just a really pretty card. I love these things. Uh, we see it a lot with like game day promos and stuff where you do get that full uh, that full card artwork, uh, and I really. Think think that's special and so uh while i don't plan to use this card really anywhere uh it is just a really beautiful piece and so for me it was kind of an easy pickup any kind of promos like these i generally pick up uh just because you know they hold some value it's not a ton by any means but they do hold a little bit uh and they're unique and i i think part of my vision for collecting uh, is creating a very unique collection and not everybody is going to have a silly card like this because one it's not that powerful but two they may not know it exists, and so it's kind of a nice way to, to get something a little unique in the collection. All right, so I, I told you we would explain that joke. Uh, the first card we have is Gamble. Uh, this is actually quite an interesting card. Um, they've reprinted this a handful of times, which has really tanked the value overall, uh, but this is the original Urza Saga version of the card. 
Uh, and it's a one mana sorcery. Search your library for a card, then put it into your hand, then discard a card at, at random, shuffle your deck afterwards. Uh, what's interesting about this is it works extraordinarily well with cards that have flashback or something that you can bring back from the graveyard. In particular, something in like a storm deck with past in flames is actually kind of nice because you can replay the past in flames that you get, or if you discard another card, you get access to it later on uh, because of the past in flames. And so uh, it's a really efficient way of kind of it's it's it plays a similar role to things like gifts ungiven where it, it's a little bit of a cheaper way to do it uh that you get to pick the card from your deck that you know you're gonna need and that enables your strategy uh and even if you discard it you kind of don't care if that makes sense uh and so for that reason it's a really awesome card uh this is being the original one i think obviously the most valuable i that might be incorrect if there's like a promo judge foil promo or something like that i'm not sure uh but i do love the old school card frame and again just a really special card in my opinion probably one of the higher value in, in this week's as well we didn't get a ton of crazy value this week uh, next up, we got Magus of the Moon. This is Blood Moon on a stick. It costs the exact same, uh, and it's a 2-2 creature. Non-basic lands are mountains. Now, what you would normally see this in, uh, or at least the reason I really wanted to pick this up, uh, is a creature toolbox deck that's trying to shut down the opponent's lands or something like uh, the, is it the 12 moon deck or something like that. It, it's one of those decks that uh, you really are trying to shut down the opponent's mana base. And because of, you know, the modern format and things like that, running so many non-basic lands, Magus of the Moon is actually a huge hit for a lot of those decks, especially if you find yourself against something like humans, uh, which is generally at least four to five colors uh they have to play a lot of non-basic lands i think very few of them run many basic lands at all if any uh they they might run a couple but uh the non-basic lands just become mountains and that kind of just makes the deck not very playable uh now normally you would run the blood moon over the magus of the moon because magus of the moon is obviously a little bit easier to deal with being a 2-2 it's very easy to lightning bolt it's very easy to even just shock it get rid of it uh even fatal push especially with fetch lands and things like that is pretty easy to to work around path to exile but all that to say it's an extra copy of blood moon in the deck and blood moon can not always but can just shut down strategies uh and so i never actually pulled a future site version and i i wanted to get the original and so i'm really happy i added this to the binder it's a really pretty card uh, all right, the oldest card in uh, in the set this this week is Tunnel. This is a beta card. <clears throat> I've talked before about any time a beta card pops up on the uh, the random generator, I will generally pick it up if it's within budget. Uh, this is obviously not a very powerful card. Instant speed, one mana, destroy one wall, target wall cannot be regenerated. Obviously, walls aren't really a popular strategy unless maybe you're in commander. Seems like a corner case to me, so I don't think anybody actually runs this, but it's a really nice piece of history. Uh, the fact that it is the beta edition just means that this came out when the game really just was getting its legs under it and really getting started. And so it's a really nice historic piece in that fact, but it also shows how far the game has come. When was the last time you saw a removal spell specifically for walls? Um, I think it's been a while. And so for me, it's just a really special piece. It's that historic thing that I, I really love. Uh, I've picked up a handful of beta cards for the binder and I'm really stoked when we get done to kind of look through and see what all we have added because I, I really have only owned a few beta lands previously. So this is really a special piece in my mind. And again, just that historic relevance is pretty awesome. From old to new, we have Hex Drinker here. This is not super new, it's Modern Horizons 1. Uh, one mana spell that does feature the level up mechanics. So it starts off as a just basic 2-1 for one mana, uh, but you can level it up and then from levels three to seven, it has protection from instance and it's a 4-4. Four, four. And then from eight up, uh, it becomes a 6-6 six, six, and it has protection from everything. Uh, very silly card. It's reminiscent of things like, uh, oh, the big Hydra. Progenitus. Is it Progenitus? Yes. Uh, that has protection from everything, but obviously this is a very rough way to get there. It takes quite a while, um, but it is a really interesting card, and it is a pretty reasonable card. I mean, if you don't deal with it 
right away. Uh, it's very easy to kind of get around removal just with the protection from instance. A lot of uh, removal, especially in the modern format, is obviously focused on instant speed removal for good reason. Uh, and so having protection from instance just means that you probably are buying yourself enough time to get to the point where you can get to protection from everything. It's a bit of a risk, certainly. It's a mana sink for sure, but it's a really powerful card, and I, I really do like it. I think it's a really beautiful card as well, just the beautiful greens in the background uh, contrasting with the blues here is really awesome. Uh, another, I believe, reserve list card, Scarwood Bandits. This, again, is just a card I picked up because it was reserve list. It's not high on the reserve list, if I recall correctly, and I believe, I, I think it's on the reserve list, I should say. Uh, but it is another good historical piece. It features Forest Walk. It's from the dark, uh, which was a really interesting set. Um, and it's just a cool kind of... Uh, it's kind of that touch point of the timeline of magic. So we've seen beta, we got to see Hex Drinker, which was obviously a relatively recent in recent years printing. Uh, and so it's kind of cool to see that middle ground of something like the bandits in between here. This is obviously a few years after uh, alpha and beta were printed, but it's just a really interesting card. And I love that. I think just for the historical relevance, it's one of those cards that I'd like to pick up uh, on top of, I believe, being reserve list. Uh, it's just a really cool thing. It's not a super powerful thing by any means. Uh, take control of an artifact, sure, but they can counter the ability. <laughs> Uh, which isn't very good. So in general, I think it's just an interesting historical piece. And look, the other half of the joke, uh, Shadow of Doubt. Uh, sorry for the dad jokes, guys. Instant Speed uh, does feature hybrid mana from one of my, I think my all-time favorite set, actually, Ravnica City of Guilds. Uh, the reason I picked this up uh, is because it's actually a really sick card. Two mana instant speed. Players can't search their libraries this turn, and then you draw a card. Here's why this is good. Fetch lands exist. <laughs> uh, there's also a lot of things like Green Sun Zenith that uh, this really shuts down. Um, there's so many pieces in specific formats, and in particular modern comes to mind, uh, where you can really just shut stuff down and really get your opponent into a bad position. And in particular, fetch lands are, are really where this uh, takes, takes a hit because um, obviously they crack their fetch land, they go to search, but in response to it, you're basically saying no you can't so they basically sacrificed it for nothing which not only puts them down on mana uh but it also could potentially nerf them and it replaces the card or the shadow of doubt in your hand by drawing a card all of that for two mana uh it's it's just a really powerful card it's also a really beautiful card i think the perspective on this is really awesome despite it being mostly grayscale it's just really pretty uh and demir might be my favorite guild so you know gotta love that uh, a really amazing card here, guys. Isochron Scepter. This is our, I believe, only... Nope, we got one more artifact. Ooh, and it's a good one, too. Uh, this is the original Isochron Scepter from Mirrodin. Uncommon. Uh, we've seen it printed a couple times in things like Eternal Masters at Rare, uh, but I believe this was the only time in a main series set that it was printed at Uncommon. Uh, this gives you so much power out of very cheap instance uh that you you know like a counter spell for instance you imprint this you can repeat uh that counter spell as many times as you'd like think of the literal card counter spell <laughs> uh and it gets really really good the trick with this is uh i really got it because one it's the original printing and i didn't have the original printing but two it's very good in cube uh, you're able to do a lot of really powerful things in cube for relatively cheap mana, uh, and so it's a really nice ability to be able to do this, and I love it. I think it's a really powerful card. Uh, definitely um, a little bit of a broken card in certain circumstances, for sure, so it's kind of cool to see it here in the original printing with that beautiful artwork. I, I love this card. And our other artifact this time around, I believe. Yes, we've got one land at the back. Uh, Worm Coil Engine. Again, the original printing. This card is stupid. <laughs> There's no other way around it. 6-6 uh, six, six for 6. Has Death Touch and Life Link. And when it dies, you put a two 3-3s three on the battlefield. One with Death Touch and one with Life Link. Uh, it's a really cool card because it features kind of a splitting of the main card. So when Worm Coil Engine dies, it's very much like a worm. You split it in half and you get two 
basically alive worms and so it's really interesting how this card works it's a huge powerhouse card especially again in cube i love it uh the lifelink is obviously a way to dig out of a position where you feel you might be behind on the life total uh and so in general this is just a ridiculously powerful card i think it's a really cool one uh great tinker target in cube it's not necessarily the most powerful but it isn't a bad option uh and again it just does so much for you it can really dig you out of a bad position so i love this card absolutely stunning glad to have the original version in here we might see a promo version later um i haven't picked it up but i kind of want to i was searching through different versions and i was like "Ooh, the promo versions look good i kind of want that <laughs> Um, and the last card here, guys, is an original River of Tears. I think this is an amazingly beautiful card. Uh, the reason being, obviously, the old or the that Future Sight card frame, which was a bit of a test at the time, uh, and they haven't ever done it since. But I think it's a really cool uh, card frame. I know some people probably don't love it, but I do. Um, what I will say though is just this beautiful scene with this one little boat here is just beautiful i mean it's a stunning stunning card in my opinion uh i also really love the gradient you really get to see the blue to black gradient here a lot more than you do on a normal card nowadays uh and for comparison's sake we can look at shadow of a doubt and see you know you get it here but you don't get it in the actual text box and i think that's a really interesting uh just way to convey the color scheme and i think it's beautiful so this was really just a pickup that i i've always wanted because i love the original version i know they reprinted it and i believe iconic masters i do have a few of those and that's fine but the original just always holds a special place i actually picked up two of these on accident uh but i'm kind of happy i did because i really like this card uh but that's the last card guys let's wrap this one up all right guys so that is another 12 cards added to the binder today i do hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did make sure to leave a like leave a comment down below we will of course have our updates here for you so you can check out the value of the binder we're really getting getting up there with this one it's pretty fun uh we're also not quite halfway but we're really getting through the binder which is pretty awesome uh this has been a long long series but i'm really enjoying it and i do want to complete it over some time uh it's gonna take a while we'll probably take some breaks here and in between every once in a while do a pack opening or you know something like that but uh it's still a really awesome series that i get to share with you guys and so thank you guys very much i do appreciate all of the support all of the comments on the previous video Please make sure, again, if you've picked up anything new, let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Would love to see what you guys are picking up as well. And congratulations to everybody who has been collecting some awesome new stuff. I really do uh, wish you guys the best of luck and happy hunting on your cards, uh, your card journey there. But guys, thank you so much. I love you all. I'll see you again next week.